Whether you have a technical interview coming up or you're looking for the best way to stay prepared, you've come to the right place. My name is Uma and in this video, I'll be sharing tips to help you effectively prepare and ace your technical interview. Let's jump into it. This is the second video in the two-part series. The first video is about how you can set yourself up to get noticed by tech companies and get interviews. The link to that video is above and down in the description if you want to check it out. This video is going to be broken down into two major parts. The first part is things that you should be doing before the interview to help you prepare for the interview. And the second part is things that you should be doing during the interview while you're solving the problem with your interviewer. Let's get started with the first part, before the interview. The major thing you have to do before the interview is practice and study. Duh, I mean, everyone says that, but what does that really mean and how should you study? You need to go back to the beginning. You need to go back to the basics, data structures and algorithms. Don't just gloss over it like you're reading a book. Go into as much detail as you can. You should be able to answer questions like, what is a map? What is a set? What is a stack? What is a queue? What is an array? What is a linked list? What is a doubly linked list? What is a tree? How does it differ from a binary tree? And how does that differ from a binary search tree? What does it mean for a tree to be balanced? What is a heap? What is a mean heap? What is a max heap? How does breadth first search algorithm work? How does it differ from depth first search algorithm? And in what situations do you use which? What is Dijkstra's algorithm? What are the sorting algorithms and how do they work? What are their time complexities? These are just some of the questions that you should be able to answer or at least have a rough idea of the answer. When you're done with this, open your favorite IDE and practice how to implement some of those data structures. Yes, make your own stack class, make your own node class and write the methods for adding and popping nodes from the stack. Do this for most of the data structures, preferably in whatever language you're going to use for the main interview. Cracking the coding interview does this for most data structures, so you can read what they have, but I strongly suggest that you open an IDE and test it out yourself. Practice how to write most of these algorithms and understand how they work. Use the debug tool and step in and step out of the methods. Take a pen and paper and draw it out if it doesn't make sense. This may seem like overkill, but you're doing two main things here. One, you're getting used to the language that you're going to use to code. And two, you're learning the basics because most programming problems are solved using one or a combination of the data structures and an algorithm. For example, every 2D array problem is a variation of depth first search, breadth first search, or traversing through a tree with nodes. There are also interview questions that ask you to implement a crude version of one of the data structures. My first interview question for my current job was to implement a binary search tree. And when I was done with that, there was a special case to handle duplicate nodes, which was super easy because I knew how to implement the tree and I knew how the inner class methods worked. There are also questions like implement a stack using two queues. Well, if you know how to implement a stack and you know how to implement a queue, that's half of the problem right there and you should be able to figure out the rest with little to no help from your interviewer. After you're done with this, you can then move on to solving problems. Look, there's a ton of websites you can use to solve problems out there and they all work as long as you're solving a wide range of quality programming problems. There are two websites that I specifically recommend. The first is a fan favorite, LeetCode. If you're interviewing for a specific company, LeetCode has a curated list of questions based on companies. That's a great place to start if you don't have a lot of time. If you're looking to practice, Start with the easy questions. They could be as easy as reversing a string or directly applying one of the data structures you've learned from above. Sort them based on frequency too, so you are solving problems that come up frequently in an interview. Solve a bunch of them and build up your confidence. Once your confidence goes up, start tackling the medium questions. Some of them are easy and some of them are more challenging and do the ones you can. Try to solve them by yourself first, then look at the solution. Compare lead code solution to yours, analyze time and space complexity, and see what you could have done better. This applies to the easy questions as well. For questions you find difficult, check out lead code solution. Try to understand it in whatever way you can. Watch YouTube videos, copy and paste the code into an IDE, and do a code walkthrough step by step using the debug tool. Once you understand how it works, then solve the problem. Come back to it in a couple of days and try to solve the same question again without looking at the solution. Trust me, there are some algorithms that you need to look at multiple times before it sticks. If you're feeling up to it, tackle some of the hard ones. They usually take a lot of time, so try not to focus too much on them. 
Tackle them the same way as the medium one. Try solving them first. If you can't, look at lead code solution. Understand the solution, then solve the problem, then come back to it in a few days and try solving it again. Lead code gives you a broad range of questions, but don't lean into quantity over quality. Ideally, you want a mixture of both. Solve a lot of questions as much as you can, but for each question you solve, make sure you can go back to it and solve it again without looking at the solution. Understand the problem and understand the solution. Understand the techniques used to solve the problem and think about problems that you've solved using a similar technique. When you solve a lot of questions, you start realizing that these problems have a pattern. Depending on how a problem is framed, you'll be able to have a good idea of a solution in your head based on other problems you've solved, and this is where the magic happens. Your problem-solving skills and your coding skills will become much better. The next thing you'll need to work on is your communication skills. This leads me to the second interview prep material, PREMP. This website, in my opinion, is the best thing to happen after lead code. The idea behind it is so simple. You pick a time you're available for a mock interview. The website finds you a match from anywhere in the world. When the time comes, you join the call. The website provides interview questions for you and the person you're interviewing with. You interview the person for 30 minutes and the person interviews you for 30 minutes. When you are the interviewer, you can see solutions to the problem and give hints to the person. And when you're the one being interviewed, you only see your interview questions and vice versa. When you're done, you give feedback to the person and the other person gives feedback to you as well in these three categories problem solving, coding, and communication. Then they tell you things you did well and things that you can improve on. In my opinion, it's the best thing ever because it simulates the interview process to the T. Your interviewer is a random person from the internet, same as an actual interview. You also get to be an interviewer so you can see and learn what to say and what not to say and the best way to convey a point. You also learn how to read hints. The best part is the feedback. You can actually see how you did from a mock interview with a stranger and try to get better. It's also free 99. All you have to do is invite like two friends and you get unlimited credits. I have unlimited credits and if you want some, let me know in the comments and I'll send to as many people as the website allows me to. Listen, I can't overstate this. Pramp changed the game for me. I got better with each session. I interviewed with older people, young people, people that had English as a second language and many more. My communication and my soft skills improved greatly because of how much I practiced. I used it so much that the website ran out of interview questions for me. This paired with lead code would make you invincible. By the time the interview comes, you'll be confident that any question they give you, you have either solved it before or solved the question that is very similar in structure to it. You have also had enough sessions on PRAMP that whoever the interviewer is, you're not faced by them because you've practiced with a lot of random people. You've also seen the perspective from an interviewer and an interviewee. This leads to the second part of the interview, during the interview. On the day of the interview, stay calm, stay collected. It has all built up to this. You got it. Get to the interview location on time. If it's online, make sure you have a stable internet connection with your microphone and video connection working and tested. Before the technical part of the interview, some interviewers like to ask questions about your resume. Make sure you know the resume like the back of your hand and that you're able to answer any questions on there about projects and experiences. That'll start the interview on a good note. When the technical interview starts, the interviewer will ask you a question. They will either write it down on a whiteboard or post it on a coding pad or a Google Doc somewhere. Take your time and read the question. If the interviewer offers to read it for you, allow them to read it and explain. Sometimes they give hints by emphasizing on specific parts of the question. After they are done reading it, read it out loud yourself and understand the question. If they gave examples, go through the examples with them. Say what you understand from the examples. Come up with your own examples or ask them to come up with more examples so you understand the question even better. If you have seen the question before, I would highly suggest you tell the interviewer. Sometimes they still want you to solve the same problems. Other times they change the question and that's okay. They are judging your problem-solving skills and your communication skills and not your ability to regurgitate information that you've seen before. They can also tell if you've seen a problem before. Plus, if you have seen it before, then you're more likely to jump into a direct, most optimal answer immediately and the interviewer won't see your thought process. Once you understand the question, you can start thinking about potential ways to solve the problem, starting from the brute force. This is the point where I suggest you tell the interviewer, 
I'm thinking about potential ways that I can solve the problem. Whatever potential solution you come up with, whether it's brute force or not, tell the interviewer. If during the course of explaining the solution, you figure out it won't work, that's fine. Tell them why it won't work and start thinking about the next one. It's a two person thing. Keep them with the loop with everything that's going in your head with regards to the interview. If you're running into a roadblock in your head, tell them, I'm thinking about doing X, Y, and Z this way, but I'm afraid that it may run into a problem and I won't be able to do A, B, and C in the future. Depending on what the problem is, this is the time where you run through your data structures, algorithms, and techniques that you've learned from other problems and think about which of them can help you here. Again, the point is that you're keeping them in the loop and they're seeing and hearing you think. If you're taking too long to come up with a solution, they may give you pointers. They may say things like, hey, remember that first approach that you were trying to go for? Why don't you do A, B, and C this way? That's okay. That's a tip right there. Remember that they are there to evaluate you, but to also guide you as needed. After you've come up with a solution, make sure they understand the solution, or at least they understand the concept behind the solution. Why? Because if you start coding without them understanding and you get stuck, they may not be able to help you because they did not understand the solution in the first place. Once you're on the same page, write down the steps to solve the problem in three to five bullet points. With each step, write what you'll be doing and get a verbal mm-hmm or a visual head nod from them. Keep them in the loop. When you start coding, explain what you're doing and if there's a need to, explain why you've done something a specific way. Use this to show your knowledge and say something like, I'm using a set here to store the numbers as opposed to an array list because I know a set does not store duplicate numbers and this is something that we may want to watch out for in the future. With every three to four lines of code you write, get a verbal check that they've understood what you've written so far. For example, initialize x to 4, then say something like, now I'm doing a for loop to get each element from an array. Then write the for loop and say, does this make sense so far? Get a verbal yes, or if it doesn't, they'll ask you why you did something a specific way. If you're making a mistake or if you misunderstood the problem or your solution is off in any way, they have been involved from the beginning and so they can help you. When you're done with your solution, walking them through it the final time becomes even easier. Explaining your time and space complexity becomes easier as well because they were with you when you wrote the code. Remember, this is really important. You're keeping them in the loop and not asking for answers. You are not asking them to validate a step. You are simply telling them what you're doing and why you're doing it so they understand. I have done interviews where the interviewer did not want to hear from me. They just wanted me to tell them when I had coded the solution to the problem and those interviews really sucked. But you have to prepare for them too and be ready. Some interviewers are not very chatty because they don't want to give out too much information. That's okay. Just make sure they understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. Don't go solo. Don't come up with a solution and code it yourself, then tell them. They don't know your thought process. Take your time and communicate. After the interview, they usually save some time for you to ask questions. Ask them about their work and what their team does. Ask about company culture and what matters to you. This is your chance to interview them. There are a lot of factors that are beyond our control for technical interviews. Some may go very well and you end up getting rejected and others may not seem like they went well at all, but you end up getting an offer. I am a firm believer in thinking and working towards things that you can control throughout the process and leaving the rest. You can't control who the interviewer is and you have no say on the type of question you get, so don't even think about that. In this case, the only thing we can control is our preparation. At the end of the day, I believe technical interviews boil down to two main things practice and communication. The one thing that helped me and everyone I have prepared is confidence and that only comes with practice. Practice to the point that any question they give you, you have either seen it before or seen something very similar to it, or if not, you can take bits and pieces from other problems to form a solution. Secondly, communicate and keep your interviewer in the loop and say what you're thinking. You may think this is not important, but trust me, it can make or break your interview. I know technical interviews are hard and I have failed and gotten rejected so many times and I know how it feels. Take it one day at a time. Don't try to solve all of lead code problems in one day. Solve them over time and go back and solve them again. Solve a wide range of problems too so you expose yourself. Don't cram the solutions to the problems. As I said, the problems are similar and you should be thinking about applying techniques from one problem to another one. 
Practice prep and make yourself better with the feedback you get from people. If one interview does not go well, use the feedback from there to make yourself better on the next one. Take it one day at a time and you'll get better over time. And I'm sure when the time for your interview comes, you'll blow it out of the park. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Peace.